Welcome everybody to Challenged Athletes Live. My name is Bob Babbitt and one of my favorite people on the planet. We share a birthday and it's actually the 15th year anniversary of the film Emmanuel's Gift. The star of the film, Emmanuel Fosuya Boy, joins us. Emmanuel, how the heck are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Good to see you. <laughs> We're wearing twinsy shirts. I like oh, it. Oh, yes, exactly. Exactly. We're birthday Bob, twins. We have so many things together. In common, right. people, people think we're twins all the oh, time. Oh, yes. Together. It's so, true. So, Emmanuel, for people who don't know the story, you're, mm -hmm. you're born in Ghana and yes. you've got a deformed right leg. And for people who don't know the history of Ghana, if you have a deform, deformity of any sort in Ghana yes. at that point of your life, uh, you were considered a second class citizen and your life was really not not going to be very special moving forward yes so your dad deserted the family and but your mother who was told to abandon you in the jungle right. he refused what what did she do for you you know my mom she gave me a lot of encouragement in my life i believe without my mom i won't be here today you see because my mom played a very big role she believed that I'm the same person like somebody who have two legs. So why um, she's supposed to drop me somewhere and instead of give me the encouragement and the motivation, then people are asking her to kill me. And she said, no, I'm not going to kill my son. I love my son. I don't know if I'm going to have another baby or not. So I'm not going to listen to people. I don't care what people are going to decide. People are going to abandon me from the family. And it's true. Because of the love my mom has for me, so many people abandoned my mom from the family, especially like my dad, my aunties, and some of the family members. But now they believe that I'm a hero or I'm their friend. But right. I said, why beginning? You didn't love me. And now you love me now. You see? So <laughs> nobody wanted to be a poor, a friend with a poor man. You see? <laughs> oh, they didn't want to be friends with a poor man with a dis with a disability. So right. Then at the when you turned thirteen, and your mom would carry you back and forth to school every day. Yes. When you turned thirteen, your mom became ill, and you had to leave school to yes. shine shoes for a couple of dollars a day to take care of the family. Right. And mom passes away at eighteen. Mm -hmm. And mom passed away when you turned eighteen. Yeah. Talk a little bit about your decision that you wanted to do something to honor her life and how you yes. came upon the idea to, to ride a bicycle across Ghana. Yes. You know, because my mom said, Emmanuel, you can do it. Don't believe people, they say you can do it. You can do it. Believe yourself. And um, that time, I wanted to play soccer with my friends in Ghana so that, you know, soccer involves so many people. So I tried to play soccer with them. And they said, no, Emmanuel, you know the way this country, they think about people we have disability. So there's nothing we can able to do to change that perception. So we can't join you to play in a soccer. And I said, okay. And my youth time too, I love soccer. I love soccer. So the time my mom passed away and I wanted to do something to honor my mom, I couldn't get some friends to join me to do that. And I sit down and I said, okay, what can I do? to let people know that we, I can make difference. And I know bicycle is individual sports. Yes. You can just take your bicycle to go to anywhere you wanted to go. So that's the time I write letter to companies in Ghana, individuals, people I know they can able to give me money to buy bicycle, but none of them give me money. Until the time I met missionaries in Ghana and they are from America. And that's the time and I make a sign of the cross. And I said, wow, I met a white. They can help me to get a bicycle, you see? And I just approached them and so that they can give me money to buy a bicycle. And they said, Emmanuel, you know, it's true. Your idea is very good, but we are young guys, missionaries from the state, but we don't have the money. And that time too, I've never hear anything about CAF. I've never seen any person riding a bicycle before with one leg or anything like that. So I, I cannot say that that one motivates me to do a lot. That time 
I don't know nothing about CAF. I don't know nothing about Jim McLennan or anyone. So it says something is just pushing me that I can do something for myself. You see? And that time too, CAF is they already helping like hundreds and the thousands of disabled people. So these people, they live in New York, but they know about CAF. And they just said, oh, okay, Emmanuel, we don't have money to give it to you to buy a bicycle, but we know a foundation called Change the Foundation. This is the foundation I love. They are in my heart, you see. So they pull out on their phone and they give me CAF address. And they say, yeah, write to them. Maybe they can help you because we know that they have many athletes from the military and so many places. So, and I said, okay. And it doesn't bring my spirit down. And I said, good. So that time, my English is not that good. I don't know how to write too much. So I go to a typewriter and I said, I want you to help me to write a letter to send to America. And the guy helped me. He, he, I read all the story to the guy and the guy writes everything. So lucky and um, CF2 because of they are helping athletes like me and they are not trying to turn everyone down. They send me grand, grand request all the way to Ghana and I receive it. And I still take the bicycle portion that I need a bicycle. And since from that time, and I know my dream will come true. And I was so very happy that I can get people from somewhere they didn't know me before and they believe in my dream that I can able to do something so that's how the story started and now my story is boom everywhere what i tell people all the time when when people say to me how do i make a difference in the world i said let me tell you a story about a young man named emmanuel who had a deformed leg and asked for a bicycle rode 600 kilometers on one leg across uh -huh. ghana on that bicycle yes. Then, for the first time ever, got on an airplane and came to the U.S. Yes. to do the bike ride as part of our San Diego Triathlon Challenge that we created for Jim McLaren. And I yes. remember it took you seven hours on mm -hmm. one leg on the yes. mountain bike to do that yes. bike ride. Yes. Coming to the U.S. for the first time, what, what, what was going through your mind? Here you are in a, in a country that you've never been to before and with all these other challenged athletes who are being yes. treated differently than people in Ghana would be treated. Yes. You know, that was an amazing story came to my life because in my family, I have so many people, they are educated than me. They have two legs. And in Africa too, everyone dream is go to America. So the time I get invitation from CAF to come and participate with them, all my friends and the people in my community, they didn't believe it. They didn't believe it. They think I'm joking or something like that. How can you go to America? A person, you have a one leg with crutches and we are educated. We have a business. We can't even go. So people doubt me because it's not easy. The same thing I tried to ride a bicycle, people doubt me. So, you know, in this world, nobody can change you. You can change yourself. So I tell them that I will do it. So the time I came to this country, the first time, and I met Rudy and so many people, and I said to myself that, you know, I'm not going to stay here. I want to make a difference in my country. So no matter what, I will go back for them to know that, yes, I've been there, and I still want a dream to fulfill. So the story to come to America is unbelievable, and I believe God worked in mysterious ways. So that's really where the idea came from when you came to the U.S. and saw all these other challenged athletes, the idea to go back to Ghana and yes. get more rights for the disabled. That came from that first San Diego Triathlon Challenge. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Because I know the first time I came to this country, you know, I have only $3 in my pocket. And uh, Bob and the Jeffrey, they sent me to La Jolla at the restaurant to eat. And I check the menu and it's like $12, $15. And no, can I take this money back? Because <laughs> you see, it's, it's wonderful. The way people treat me and everything. I remember um, that time it was um, Aspen. They are the main sponsorship for the CAF. And yes. they, 
their their workers they took me out to the sea world and everything and i love it so much so you know the love i have that is the time i said that okay this is what something i was looking for for a long time and now if i have this opportunity i won't let this opportunity to go by i will do something to help myself and help my people and since from that time the the award caf they helped me to one from a nike that one helped me a lot i used that money to educate 15 disabled people in ghana some of them finish the high school college and all those things i give scholarship to people right now through me disabled sports in ghana is very huge right now we have women and putty soccer team in ghana we have men and putty soccer team in ghana all came from me and all came from caf so without them my dream will never come true so you know i'm so very happy to be part of caf when after you did that first San Diego Triathlon Challenge, that's when you yeah. went to visit Loma Linda Hospital. Yes. And they said that you were a candidate for prosthetic. Yes. You go back to Ghana. And uh -huh. then when you come back for the operation, you've got a little bit of company with you. You have a video crew, Lisa Lax yes. and Andrew Stern, who were friends yes. of mine. And they came mm -hmm. to document and capture your story. Yes. You're, you went from being this poor young man with a deformed leg to mm -hmm. having a camera crew, to having a film narrated by Oprah Winfrey on your right. life, Manuel's gift, being in the president's Oval Office, the president of the United States, George W. Bush, yes. and him uh, asking you how you ride your mountain bike and next thing you know, all this, the difference that it made, the having President Bush meet you in the Oval Office and that picture yeah. appearing in the papers in Ghana, what yeah. difference did that make? in terms of your president of Ghana accepting and trying to help the, the lives of the disabled? Yes, you know, Bob, anytime I hear that story, then I'm crying because in this world, people doesn't believe people. And you know, all those things came the beginning of the CAF because after Jim McClellan had his first accident, his friends like you and Jeffrey and other people, you didn't guy didn't abandon him. You guys still believe in him that he can able to do something. For instance, he's still alive. Let's do something to support him. But in this world, not many people or good friends, they can be with you from day one to the day you die. So it's very sad and it's very touching that always we, 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 we said, when you, when you help a lady, then you help a generation or the world. That's how we're supposed to do. Anytime you have, a you have a friend with someone, you have to be with a friend and listen to the friend and help that friend. You know, in this world, for instance, we don't have the superpower to make everything happen right away. We have to help someone any little we can. Not maybe if you don't have all the gadgets or everything to help the person to go to where he is going, just help him to reach somewhere and somebody will continue from there. That's how it will make the world as a big chain for all of us, for all of us to benefit from the world. So for my people didn't believe me and um, some, some people believe me from somewhere for me to come to that position and for them to continue, and my presence said, now what do you need? How can I help you to reach your goal or to make your dream come true? It's a powerful story because the beginning, they didn't believe that I can do something. And now people help me and they, they, they've seen that I didn't give up. I keep on pounding onto where I wanted to reach. So if they didn't help me, it would be a shame for them. That's why they jump in to help me. But I thank God that now, through the effort I took and I didn't give up, now they know that they have to jump in and help some other people too. So it's very good that in this world, we don't have to keep on, we don't have to 
um, give up. We have to keep on pounding until the day our dream will come true. Yes. So, Emmanuel, when the uh, when the when Ghana passed the Disability Act, yes, and you know how important you were to making that happen, how did that make you feel? I feel so great, up to date. Right now, I feel very proud. I feel very proud about through me what happened in my country for disabled people and everything. I remember a couple of weeks ago, I was here and um, somebody is trying to make fun of disabled people in Ghana. And they call me all the way from Ghana for me the, to interview me, for me to be the voice for the people. They want me to say something about that. Or they ask me about my opinion. And I did, and they feel so very happy. So I believe that it's very good that um, we have to be the voice for the voiceless. Love that. Uh, Emmanuel, in terms of the, it's been such a great partnership, Challenge Athletes Foundation and Emmanuel. You yes. came over really with nothing. And then yes. through, through Nike, you got the $50,000 grant, 25,000 yes. from Nike and 25,000 mm -hmm. to become our ambassador to Ghana. Give me a little bit of an update on some of those original students. How have they done, some of the students that you've helped out? Oh, yes. Right now, some of the students, I help them. Some of them, I know one lady. I know two ladies. One is a teacher right now. And one lady, too, he's a nurse, professional nurse right now. And some of the other guys, too, I know them. Some of them, I know one guy, Ernest. He's IT. He works with a big company right now in Ghana. And one other, you know, I, I feel very proud. I feel very proud for myself because, you know, in this world, it's not all the time. It's about money, 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 money. But the love you show to someone, it will stick into that person's head forever. Because my mom, she doesn't have any money. But the love my mom has for me, I still remember her and I still love her. So maybe... If you give me like millions of dollars, maybe now I'm already blow the money and I can't have nothing. But the love and the encouragement and the enthusiasm and everything my mom puts in my life for me is good. So that's why I always, um, I don't have money, but always I try to help people in any how I can do. That's why I choose to become as a motivational speaker to tell people about my story that there's nothing is too late. For instance, you are alive, you can do a lot. You can be happy, you can do something to help yourself and your friends and the other people, yep. Love it. Emmanuel, it's always such a pleasure to catch up with you. You're doing great stuff. You're, you're looking happy. You're so dynamic. I love what you've done for your country. And yes. it's, uh, it, I can't believe it's been 15 years since the film came out. Oh my goodness, it's, it's wonderful. It's, and you know, Bob, I have always in, in my documentary, I said one day I'll be going to go to parliament. And right now, a lot of politicians in Ghana, they want me in parliament. So for sure, next four years, maybe I'll be going to parliament in Ghana. Yeah, to help them to make some laws change. I yes. love it. Yes, yes. <laughs> Member of Parliament, Emmanuel Afosu Yuboa has yes. been our guest <laughs> on Challenged Athletes Live, a 15th yes. anniversary of his film, Emmanuel's Gift. If you have not seen Emmanuel's Gift, narrated by Oprah Winfrey, you need to check it out. Emmanuel, thank you for being such a great part. Thank of you so much. Athletes. Thank you so it's much. Thank you so much. Always an honor. This has thank been Challenged Athletes Live. Thank that is Emmanuel. My name is Bob. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll catch you next time. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.